Hey there, this is Janelle Anderson, and I'm so excited that you'll be joining my study, Becoming a Daughter, Knowing the Heart of the Father. This is a Bible study I wrote many years ago, taught in my church, and since that time have felt that I should turn it into an actual book so other women can enjoy it. And so I decided the easiest way to do that is to teach it again online and record myself and then turn that into a book. So because you'll be a part of this study, you'll be a part of that creative process. I'm super excited about that. So today what I want to do is give you a little sneak preview so you can get excited about it and have a little better idea of the kinds of things we'll be talking about. And you can also invite other women to join us. So that would be fabulous. So the heart of the father, there are 10 characteristics um, in the Bible that show us the heart of the father. And each one of those I'll be weaving into a story from a woman in the Bible and her story. And it's just fascinating to see the heart of the Father showing up over and over again all throughout Scripture when you really dig for it and look for it. It's like this hidden treasure. So to begin with, I want to, and I'll be looking at some notes, so I hope that doesn't distract you. Um, so what I want to do is just direct your attention. If you've got your Bible, great. You can open it up to Genesis, back when the Lord was creating, um, just in chapter 1. And he created all the plants and animals and all of that. And he created, then he said, let us make man in our own image. And he said, we'll make them man, we'll make them male and female. And so man there just means humanity. And he created male and female. And then he gave them the directive to rule over the earth and to cultivate the garden and be fruitful and multiply, right? But he gave that directive to both of them. There is no distinction there between, you know, one being more important or higher than the other. They were equal. And what I want to draw your attention to there in Genesis 2, where he, he um, it goes into detail about that creation of man and woman. It talks about how he formed man from the dust of the earth. But when it came time to form or create woman, he put Adam into a deep sleep, drew out one of his ribs, fashioned Eve. That word fashioned means to build, to carefully construct, and to design. We were created in a way that was completely different from anything else in creation. And then after he created man and then woman, the final creation was woman, he said, oh, this is very good. When he created everything else, he just said, this is good. But when he created woman, this is very good. And man too, but we're talking about women today. <laughs> So I want to just bring out the father's heart when he created Eve, the first woman. It was right there. The first characteristic of the father's heart that I'm just going to give you a little preview of is that he, it's his heart to give us all things. In John, we see Jesus in John 17, we see Jesus praying to the father and he's saying, all the glory you've given me, I've given to them. Everything you've made known to me, I've made known to them. And in, in John 3, it says that the Father loved the Son and gave him all things. So the Father's heart is to give all things to his Son, and his Son turns around and gives us all the glory that God gave him. Glory means God's thoughts and opinions and recognition, basically everything God is. He gives that to us. A part of that is the reflection of who he is through us. So when he created the first woman, he created her in a special way. He fashioned her and built her and designed her. And then it says there in Genesis that she was made as a helper suitable. Sometimes we hear that translated help meet. Now, I don't know about you, but and I've been walking with the Lord now since 1980. Every time I heard help meet, to me, it meant less than or sort of like a servant to men. And it always kind of made me cringe inside because it made me feel like I was less important, less valuable, or somehow, you know, underneath. That is not at all what that means. So the Father's heart is to give us all things. And when he created Eve, he gave her everything she needed to be equal to in every way and just as valuable and important with just as much of a calling and a destiny to rule the earth and to cultivate it and to be fruitful and multiply. So the words helper, suitable in the Hebrew are ezer, connecto. 
Easer is the word for help. That word is used to describe God as our help many times in scripture. So it's not a less than kind of help. It's a strong, sustainable help. And the word connecto actually means completer. So it's that sense of forming together and being the comparable part to that completer. So that better half, as you hear people say, I mean, literally when Adam saw Eve and declared that over her, she was the completion of him. She fit him. We complement one another. We are not less than we complement. And so when he created Eve, he gave her all that she needed and he poured into her the beauty and the goodness and the delightfulness, that word very good, good, that's what it means, beauty and excellence and delightfulness. There's no language there in creation where God, the Father, declares over Eve that she's less than. She's created in the image and likeness of God along with Adam and even fashioned in a different way, designed, built. And then he put them in Eden. So Eden literally means pleasure, and it comes from a root word, which means to be soft, pleasant, to live voluptuously, and to delight yourself. So the definition of voluptuous, that really just means full of delight and pleasure. In our culture, it means it's attached to like sex and sensual things that uh, are not wholesome (laughs) when we think of voluptuous But really think about that. A voluptuous woman, what do you picture? She's full, right? (laughs) She's overflowing with womanness. And so Eden was a place of fullness, a place of overflowing beauty and pleasure and enjoyment. So God created this place of pleasure and enjoyment and fullness and abundance for his people, for us. Miles Monroe describes the word Eden to mean the delightful spot for the moment where the presence of God is an open door to heaven. So even though it's not a physical place anymore, it still exists as an atmosphere or an environment where the presence of God dwells, where there's there's an open door for us to commune with him, to walk with him, to be full and full of joy and full of pleasure and delight in being his daughter. So we'll be looking at that in depth. And I just wanted to bring you a little taste of what we're going to be looking at. The Father's heart for us is so amazing. You were created in a special way to be who you are. And his Father, the Father's heart is to give you all things. So I'm super excited to be doing this study with you. I hope that that whets your appetite a little bit. And I really do invite you to ask friends to join us. And you can... If you haven't registered, well, actually you have registered or you wouldn't be getting this video. So just click on the link in this email and send that to your friends and have them register as well. Looking forward to hanging out with you. You'll get more information as we get closer to the actual start date on May 30th. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, certainly reach out to me. You can email me at Janelle at EmergingLifeCoaching.com. And I would love to hear from you. Jump on into my Facebook group if you want some community and some connection with other women in the meantime. And I look forward to getting to know you and doing this study with you. Thank you again for joining me. It's a pleasure to have you as a part of this project. So God blessed, and I will be talking to you soon.